What up YouTube? I'm so excited to show you guys this today. I'm giving you uh, one of the first behind the scenes walkthroughs of our new growth data tool. You all have been here. You've seen the growth equation. You've seen me drawn it with the Sharpie. And now I'm going to give you a little bit of how we've taken that idea and we're going to bring it to life for you in form of data. We're going to give you some unique insights in this tool that connects to Shopify, Facebook, Google Analytics, Google AdWords, Klaviyo, QuickBooks coming soon, Recharge, so many ways that we're going to aggregate and provide you not just data on your own brands, but also benchmarks across our entire portfolio of brands um, all coming soon. So I'm giving you the first sneak peek. Uh, after you watch this, go to growthdata.commonthreadco.com to sign up for early access. We're probably about a month or so away from getting people in there and onboarded, but want to give you some of the things that you'll be able to get out of this tool. So looking now at Bamboo Earth, one of our, our, our skincare brand, you've seen me talk about it before, and I'm going to use it to walk you through some of the data that you're going to have access to inside of growth data tool. So um, if you look, we're looking here at the revenue report. So you'll see that equation that we're all so familiar with um, here that we brought to life as the core interface. So it's actually how you'll interact to access different reports is through uh, that feature. So in this case, what I'm looking at um, here is what we look at as the highest level macro view of the data that we're tracking daily for our clients, for our own brands, and that is revenue, spend, MER, or marketing efficiency rating. So you guys know that's total sales divided by total ad spend when we use that term. And so what we do is we, at the, we have a forecasting process internally where we come in and it allows us to generate targets. So you come into the tool, you put in your revenue goal, your ad budget, and it gives you an MER goal. And then what it does is it creates these dotted lines that give you sort of a benchmark of what your daily spend should look like. So you got blue lines are revenue, green lines are ad spend, and you can see on a daily basis sort of what you're getting to. Obviously what we want are lines that look like this, exceeding target and below spend. And what we don't want are lines that look like this, where we're missing revenue and overspending. But you can see our sales against our target, our spend against our target, our MER against our target, and then our Facebook ROAS and Google ROAS uh, all displayed on this sort of highest level revenue dashboard. This also shows us total new customers acquired in that period, new customers as a percentage of total, the cost of acquiring a new customer, and then what SKUs we sold over the given time period. And again, I can choose yesterday, last seven days, et cetera. So this is sort of the top level dashboard view of sales. Um, and then inside of each of these sections, we have a whole set of reports. So here you can see all the different revenue reports we can look at. I'm gonna show you a few of my favorite features in here. Um, so the top products reports, this just shows me the uh, revenue by individual SKU sales. And one of my favorite things is the refund rate by SKU, such an important metric that's not considered enough. I'll give you an example of why it's so important. If you look right here at our intense hydration mist, you can see it has a 6% refund rate, whereas our individual mini kit only has a 0.7% refund kit or refund rate. That's five points of margin right there in the difference between selling one product and another one. If you've ever watched my <clears throat> video on SKU specific ROAS funnels, or uh, why it's so bad to have a single account ROAS target. It's because not all SKUs net you the same amount. This highlights that point, allows you to check it out and see how you can fix it. Other cool reports inside of this section here include time lag between orders. You're gonna be able to see if order one happens on day zero, when do the subsequent second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth orders happen by day. So this helps you to think about your post-purchase emails flows, when customers are buying, that sort of thing. Um, and then if we bounce over here, I'm gonna go into the LTV section. This is probably my favorite part of the tool. It's gonna to give you unique insights that are super critical to your business around lifetime value. So right off the bat, you see this dashboard view again. Um, I'm gonna look at this year. So four different ways to look at it. Last quarter, six months, this year, last year. The reason we don't have shorter windows is because obviously LTV is a length of time measurement. So for the data actualized, we have to look at larger windows. So this year, you can see this dashboard, what's showing me is that my AOV is 6381. Then again, all of our terms coming to life from the CTC ecosystem, right? Cash multiplier, a phrase that we use to represent your 60 day LTV. Boom, right there. You can see the increase from my AOV to my 60 day LTV right there. And then my full LTV based on the window I've selected right there. So you can see Bamboo Earth, one of the best things about it is the, it's the almost 40% increase in LTV from AOV. Um, and then this is where it gets really exciting. This bar chart right here, what it shows me 
is it shows me my 60 day LTV percent increase by product. So as you can see right here, this is where you can unlock some real gems and thinking about which products to focus on selling. So as an example, if we look here at the ultimate discovery kit, you can see that customers who came in on this is the first purchase. So what we're looking at is a cohort sorted by first product purchase. So in this case, you can see that customers who came in on, for, on the ultimate discovery kit as their first product, their value increases 74% within 60 days. Whereas all the way down here at the complete collection, or the, the body oil glow collection, you can see that increases only 20%. So if I sell both of those products at a two to one ROAS, the reality is I'm gonna make almost three times as much money off of uh, over the next subsequent 60 days selling this product. And this, like, this at glance is just worth the tool itself, but there's so much more. You can see that same sort of graph that shows you the increase from AOV to 60 day LTV. So you can see sort of this combination of which products and the relationship between AOV and 60 day LTV. This one shows you a similar thing, so LTV over time, AOV, 60 day LTV, 60 day plus LTV. So what this is gonna show me is like, ooh, this cohort right here, this August of 2019, why were they so disproportionately valuable? What did I do then? What happened with that group that made them so valuable? Instantly highlights some easy things to go check out. Now, within this, I wanna show you a few things. Revenue over time. So a similar view to what we're talking about. And I can look at this in lots of different views. So you can see here, cohort by month. So what this is showing me is customers acquired in January. There were 3,630 of them. This was their average order value. This is how much they were worth to me over 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, 180 days, LTV. And then down here, you have the weighted average of the time period you've selected. And I can adjust this time period to whatever window I wanna look at. So adjusting that window. Now, this is where it gets really fun. I can begin to filter these cohorts by all sorts of different variables. So if I wanna show, just show me people who used discount code Bamboo Beauty. What was their value to me on an AOV basis and what was their value over time, right? If I wanted to, again, first product purchase, just show me people who bought rose water cleanser. What were they worth to me? How about this? Just people who came on a first purchase via email. Show me that cohort or specific Facebook campaign. Show me everybody who came off this skincare beauty interest stack campaign, those values. Or even more, if I wanted to look at not just individual products, but I wanted to look at categories of products. Let's say I wanted to see, show me all my kit, all the customers who came in on kits first. Ooh boy, right away, super value there. The ability to look at the value of your customers by category. So, so much there. Um, <clears throat> another fun report, we call it the product by first product report. So this shows me order count, first order, second order, third order, fourth order. So the most common products ordered for first orders, you see route shipping there, that's usually number one. But then rosemary toner is my most common. So now the question I wanna ask is, if I click rosemary toner, I can see if someone bought rosemary toner with their first order, what did they buy in the second order most often? Well, the most common second order was another uh, purchase of rosemary toner. But I can also see the relationship that Rosewater Cleanser is the product that is bought most often in the first order with it and in the second order um, as well. So if I wanna think about cross-selling, upselling, post-purchase email flows, I can start to pair those SKUs together and understand their relationship. Another great one is Facebook LTV to CAC. Sorry about that, Naveen, we're gonna to have to... But this is a fun report that allows me to take those 30, 60, and 90 day LTV values and compare them against my CAC in specific campaigns. So you can see, let me show you the good one here. That's a fun example. Let's do this, boom. Where was it? Um, I'm, oh, that's why I gotta go. Let's go this year. Sorry, and we'll run this report again. So what this is gonna allow me to look at all my Facebook campaigns that I've spent money on, and I can determine the increase in LTV from 30 days to 60 days to 90 days um, in this tool. So um, like, let's use, there was a good example in here that I liked. Okay, here we go. Uh, no, not that one, not that one. Let's use, okay, perfect. Skin quiz, there it is. So you can see acquisition cost this year, I've spent $151,000 on this skin quiz funnel. Now look at this, my cost of acquisition for this funnel, $57. My 30 day LTV only 72 bucks. So you can see right away my 30 day LTV to CAC 1.26, but 
60 days, 90 days, 120 days later, you can see the massive increase in this cohort of customers. And so you can see my 90 day LTV is actually a three to one on this campaign. So now you can begin to broaden the view of the customers that you acquire. So imagine like the, the, the sort of comparison of this is like if I was looking at comparing, let's say this prospecting campaign, broad audience skin quiz, 1.94. If you were to compare that against this funnel right here, you'd see that on a 30 day view, the 1.94 way better ROAS than the 1.26. So if you were gonna turn off one campaign, you would pump the spend on this one and you would turn this one off. But on a 90 day window or a 120 day window, this cohort is actually more valuable. So those kinds of insights become really, so, so more than making an assumption about that is causally true every time, I'm gonna go try and figure out why that might be true. Andrew Ferris at 4x400 loves to say that what data does is it doesn't reveal answers. It helps you ask better questions. And so that's one of the things that would guide me to go then figure out, okay, what are the campaigns where the LTV is, the LTV to CAC is substantially increasing over time? In the conversion rate section, so much cool stuff. Average load time over the last 30 days. So I can see my site speed, something we really care about as it relates to conversion rate. And then I can see straight out of Google Analytics, this report page metric speed over time. So this shows me again at glance what the, the, the speed of each of my pages relative to average. So it allows me to highlight problems. So like, ooh, this right here is a trigger for me. Uh, this one, 8.1 second load time, way worse than average. So I wanna go figure out what is causing this PDP page to load so slowly and could I fix it? And really, a lot of my PDP pages, ooh, what is this page? The DSMM lander, I honestly do not know what this is. Let's see, the other. Um, okay, so this is a landing page that we built, it looks like, and this page is slow, slow. Looks like we, oh, Dead Sea Mudvast, DSMMM. There you go, that's what it is. So that page we've gotta do some work on. So right away it highlights that. I can also look at top landing pages. So this allows me to pull in um, by all of the pages that traffic comes in on, average load time, session duration, conversion rate. And pretty soon we're gonna be able to filter that by just your Facebook ads, just show me landing pages for Facebook ads. So good stuff around conversion rate, more coming there too. Visitors dashboard. So this just shows me traffic um, and it allows me to break down. One of the things we really care about is organic as a percentage of total. How much of our traffic is being paid for? You can see the pie chart. We talk about this in, the, in that visitors um, uh, Sharpie video I do where I talk about traffic pie. Where is your traffic coming from by channel? We wanna see a diverse, healthy traffic pie with ideally this is a 50-50 or better ratio. Um, then you can see black is paid channels, green is organic channels. You can see where your traffic is coming from as well as month over month comparisons in those channels. Also Facebook data. So your Facebook dashboard, and I, my window is gonna get screwed up here, but oh, there we go down here. Okay, so you can see I have uh, a dashboard view of all my Facebook campaigns. So if I wanted to look at my spend, daily spend, um, let's do this month. Oh, sorry, that's gonna take a second now because I just, there you go, the whole year. If I can just go this month, sorry, last seven days, let's do that. Last seven days, Facebook data, you can see all of the core metrics, spend, revenue, purchases, checkouts initiated, add to the carts, ROAS, CPA, CPCI, um, we have conversion rate on here as well as add to cart to click percentages um, and, and checkout initiated to add to cart percentages. So you can see sort of the full funnel view of your Facebook ad performance um, in this dashboard. I can look at all ads. I can look at prospecting. I can sort this even by campaign name, sort of the traditional Facebook view that you wanna see. And the, the color scheme shows you the further away from average it is, so the, the better it is relative to average, the more red the numbers become. So you can see your best and worst performing campaigns by a variety of different metrics. Um, you can look, filter just video ads. You can look at just image ads. You can look at prospecting, remarketing, re-engagement. Anything you want from your Facebook ad data, boom, right there. Um, additionally, ADA overview. So you guys know we talk about ADA a lot in terms of the metrics. Right, so if we go, um, if we wanted to look at just the ADA metrics for our creative. So um, again, attention, interest, desire, action. We look at three second views to impressions, video average, watch time, outbound CTR, and ROAS. Um, I can filter this by video ads to image ads. Again, prospecting, remarketing, re-engagement, different all campaigns. 
So all campaign video ads. This is usually what we're using this to look at is the performance of our video ads. You can see how we're doing over time. If I wanted to look at specific campaigns, um, the, this gives me those ADA metrics right away. Then I have this ADA baseline report that allows me to compare specific ads over different periods of time. So if I wanted to set the initial comparison month and I wanted to compare this month to the last 30 days, okay, this month base period starts. We'll set the base period to this month. Uh, sorry, yep, and then we'll compare it to the last 30 days. Um, oops, base period 923 to 1023, quick dates. Oh, sorry, this month. Um, so you can see comparing different ads over different periods of time. I gotta compare this to, uh, let's do, sorry, let's do last seven days. Last seven days. Oh, I'm messing this up. But the point is that you're going to be able to compare at individual ad performance over different periods of time. Because what we use this specifically for our media or our designers, one of their core KPIs. There we go. Is comparing week over week uh, individual Facebook ads. So you can click into the campaign name and you can see their performance over time. Uh, and then you can click on the actual ad. It takes you right into Facebook for your ADA metrics. Um, traffic channel report. So this just shows me revenue, transactions, conversion rate by channel. So paid social, email, direct. So much stuff in here, guys. And what we're doing is every two weeks, we're releasing new features, releasing new reports. The next big thing we have coming is benchmarks where you're gonna be looking, able to look at your conversion rate, your LTV in comparison to our the entirety of our portfolio. So. So much stuff in here that's gonna give you context, gonna give you direction and insights to go out and generate real meaningful impact. So really close to being live, uh, to being able to offer this to you, to get you in there. Go to growthdata.commonthreadco.com to sign up now um, and get your name on the wait list to get early access. Um, and our team will be reaching out to set you up. Obviously all of our CTC clients um, are already in here, they're using it. We're using these insights to help generate unique outcomes for their ad accounts. It gives us a massive advantage over so many different other um, agencies and brands to be able to provide you with information that others can't. So um, of course, if you wanna work with us, we can get you in here and operating right away. So otherwise we're a few months away, month to two months maybe, um, in terms of getting people onboarded. We wanna make sure the experience, we got I don't love the UI yet, we get some design stuff, some onboarding things to fix, but. Man, it's super exciting. We've been working hard, uh, the team, on getting this information to you, and we're super stoked.